daughter of the ancient mother, I am the child of the mother of the world. I am the daughter of the ancient mother, I am the child of the mother of the world. Melissa, you're a free range psychic, and today I want to do a guided reading on Gaia. Mother Earth wanted to do a reading on the state of the planet, our relationship with her, and also how, ways we might be able to help her heal. So I wanted to uh, read an article about the heat wave that's um, uh, currently affecting uh, Europe in such a devastating way. Um, so 113 degrees in 113 degrees in France, why Europe is so vulnerable to extreme heat. This is from Vox magazine and um, it's by uh, Umar Irfan. I I'll paste the link below if you want to reference it. Updated June 28th, 2019. Deadly hot weather has set records across Europe this week as a heat wave baked the continent. Monthly and all-time temperature records were broken Wednesday in parts of Germany, Poland, France, and Spain, as well as the Czech Republic. At least two people died from the heat in Spain. Clermont Ferrand, France, reported a record high of 105.6 degrees Fahrenheit, but the country's all-time temperature record of 113.3 degrees Fahrenheit um, uh, was reached in the village of Viville on Friday. Quote, the whole government is mobilized, unquote, French President uh, Emmanuel Macron told reporters on Monday. Public health warnings for heat have also been issued in Belgium, Italy, and Switzerland. The heat has forced the, pub uh, sorry, the cancellation of some public events and caused schools in France to postpone exams for the first time ever. Public cooling rooms have been opened in France and other cities. The Women's World Cup in France is still underway. Matches are scheduled for evenings this week. The heat has also helped create dry conditions, fueling a massive 10,000 acre wildfire in Spain, one of the worst to hit Catalonia uh, in uh, 20 years. Europe's hot weather uh, follows some unusually warm temperatures in other parts of the world this month. 
including the Arctic. Temperatures in Greenland surged up to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, above what's normal this time of year, leading to uh, the largest ice melt um, this early in the season on record. A heat wave in India this month has already killed dozens. Um, and just uh, to interject here, um, the city of Chennai in northern India is uh, now officially without water because of the, the terrible drought. The high temperatures in Europe have also, um, uh, or also could potentially stand to harm millions of people. And, uh, and as average, average temperatures rise due to climate change, these spans of extreme heat are poised to get longer, more intense, more frequent, and more deadly. So that's just a paragraph from this article. Um, and uh, the, the last, I'm going to skip over to the last paragraph. Extreme heat is a vivid climate change signal. The length, intensity, and frequency of heat waves are on the rise, and Europe's steering weather this week comports with what scientists expect as the climate changes. Though it will take some time to tease out the specific extent of humanity's role in the current wave, but researchers have built up a better understanding of last year's heat wave across Europe in the context of climate change. Scientists report last year that climate change has made heat waves similar to the 2018 heat wave in Europe five times more likely. Researchers also reported that 2018 was one of the hottest years ever. The concern now is that Europe today may not be prepared for what's to come. Infrastructure like roads, bridges, and all railway tracks will now have to compensate for regularly high, higher temperatures. Parts of Germany have already issued speed restrictions for the Audubon. Uh, similarly, extreme uh, heat has helped drive, a major wild, uh, drive major wildfires as far north as the Arctic Circle last year. Wildfires have uh, again surged in Europe this year, so parts of Europe are dealing with weighty questions of whether they should rebuild uh, fire-prone regions or start to retreat as the risk of massive blazes um, next to densely populated areas grow. And of course, um, here in America, you know, we that's a major problem for many areas of the United States. So, uh, it, you know, it's one thing to abstractly, you know, talk about climate change, but when you're actually living through it and uh, you have to deal with the consequences, it, and then um, it's a it's a major reality. What are we going to do about it? So the deck I'm going to use today is the Wildwood Tarot deck, the same deck I used for the summer solstice reading. And it's by Mark Ryan and John Matthews, the illustrations are by Will Worthington. It's a really beautiful deck, I think. <laughs> the subject card my guides chose is the Six of Vessels that equates to the Six of Cups in the conventional tarot. When I asked my guides what this card meant in relation to Gaia, they told me it's to do with water. It's to do with water as a source of life and our dependence on water and the necessity for us to protect our water, to fight for our water, for the world, for our life, because water is under threat pollution, privatization, droughts, you know, Flint, the Flint water crisis, which was taking the city off Detroit water for private reasons regarding, I believe to the, or regarding uh, the extraction industries needing a pipeline uh, that they wanted to uh, get funding for and they wanted to justify it by saying, well, Flint needs it, but it really didn't. It was doing fine with Detroit water, but instead they took a whole city off Detroit water and then poisoned them with Flint River water. Nestle's taking billions of gallons of water, but drying up uh, people's uh, water sources, communities water sources, paying virtually nothing and making profits 
the owners of these companies believing that water is not a human right, it, it, it's, it should all be privatized, and only the ones who can afford it <laughs> uh, can uh, uh, have it served up to them in nice uh, uh, plastic bottles. to take us away from our source. This is a big battle. This has been going on for a while now, and it's a well thought out battle by the uh, corporations. And we are fighting, virtually fighting for our lives right now. It's also about the um, you know, pollution of the ocean with plastic, the pipeline companies polluting our, our aquifers and our, our, our waterways fracking, uh, polluting our aquifers and the pipelines leaking all over the place and they want to build them everywhere and they all carry a threat, the old ones and the new ones. The de deregulation of uh, uh, water protection by our, uh, this current administration so that corporations can do anything they want to the water and they have no accountability there's no protection for water. Water is a big thing. I don't know uh, how, if people remember, it was only a few years ago, you know, Standing Rock, the Sioux people fighting for uh, the protection of their, their river and their major belief was and their major fighting uh, call was Miniwachoni which means water is sacred. Water is life. Without water, there is no life. So my guides uh, chose this as a subject card. It's the crux of everything. Waking up to the fact that we're fighting for water. And not just uh, the surfeit of water, but also the uh, um, uh, lack of water. Because there are may also not just major floods, but major droughts going on, drying up, like in Chennai, uh, India, uh, drying up people's water supply. So we are all dependent on water. See the animals here. We all share the same drinking source. And water is life. And we, we need to wake up to that. We need to fight for our water. In the above position is the green woman, Gaia, the one we're reading about. And uh, my guides tell me that this card has to do with humanity, all humanity, rethinking their relationship with her and coming to realizations that she is a living, sentient being. And what are we doing? How each day that you go outside and you, you know, traverse to wherever you go, are you aware that you're walking on the skin of the mother? That she is alive? Because my guides say that we have to realize this in order to save her. We can't just take her for granted. She's just not uh, some resource that we can keep on uh, sucking dry, keep on taking and taking from. Uh, until she dies and then we die with her. That we treat her as we would treat her, our mother, our, our own mother. This is what's at stake. That we are one with her, we are her children. So to wake up to the um, aliveness, to wake up to the the realization that we are one and that she is a living being that she feels and she has thought she is sentient and we are part of her and if we don't she, you know we may not be as humans on this earth very long or for very much longer but if we wake up to the fact that we are one with her and that she is a living being and that if we change our relationship with her to honor, respect, and love her, then we can survive with her. It's either or. 
and uh, extreme climate change uh, is waking us up to that fact. So the recent past, this is our relationship with her as a, as a Western society or not even that, as any industrialized society, any society that has disconnected from their, their uh, loving and uh, 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 respectful relationship with their mother, with Gaia, this is, this is the society they live in, which is a society based on death. Now, this is the devil uh, in uh, conventional tarot. Uh, it's called the guardian in the Wildwood Tarot. But this is a society based on death, on exploitation, on uh, the uh, worship of, 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 of money, of material things, that you would continue to destroy your your source, what gives you life until it's dead, because this is your mentality. This is the mentality of the industrialized society, of the military industrial complex, of a society based on um, uh, the use of chemicals, uh, the, um, the use of fracking, the use of, uh, of mining, uh, the use of uh, destroying the earth, blowing up the earth. Uh, raping the earth to uh, extract her blood to profit off it, to not heal it, but to move on until you've destroyed her. And this is how we've come to this pass. This mi it's a mindset that informs our actions and allows us to live on really, uh, in, 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 in the United States, on a, on a society that is almost wholly... Um, uh, living off the uh, byproducts of the uh, petrochemical industries, including pharmaceuticals. A lot of pharmaceuticals actually come from petrochemicals, plastics. Pollutants. Glyphosate. What's killing our bees, what's killing our, uh, uh, our, our nature, our pollinators. <laughs> But mindsets can be changed. Underneath, this is uh, uh, the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, it's the wheel here in the Wild Tarot, but the Wheel of Fortune in Conventional Tarot. And I, uh, this card came up in the uh, Summer Solstice reading. This is our interaction with our world, with Gaia. This is us co-creating. This is us. This is us as part of the dance affecting our water, affecting our nature. How are we um, uh, relating to the earth? What is our part in this, in this creation of the current reality? And how can we think of ways to change that and create better outcomes? It's powerful realization because we have the power to change it. How are we gonna do that? near future, 10 of vessels and my guides. Uh, well, uh, before I get into that, just quickly, this is the 10 of cups in the conventional tarot. So the, my guides gave me a different um, explanation of it than the one that, that is generally uh, read into it, which is, you know, happiness and your cup, your, your cups overflow. It's um, love and marriage and that kind of thing. My guides actually say this is to do with floods excess of water because of the melting of the, the polar uh, ice cap, the, melt, the, the extreme uh, climate uh, uh, change, the, the, this, this, this heat that's melting, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the glaciers, the, uh, so that um, we, we are experiencing um, you know, um, in, uh, incremental rises in in in, in water level and um, the the uh, deluge of uh, uh, water that we've experienced in places like Nebraska and Oklahoma and Colorado, and this is going to continue because of uh, climate change. So. 
So the clarifying card is balance. Uh, that's the temperance card in the conventional tarot. And that has to do, the obvious interpretation is coming into balance. We can save the earth by coming into balance ourselves, by balancing our relationship with her, by simplifying our lifestyle, by permaculture, by having a balanced relationship with nature where we're working with nature, uh, bringing her into balance, uh, by uh, listening to her by natural means, by uh, uh, methods that will allow her to uh, become more fertile, to become abundant, to help her balance herself, really. But beyond that, my, not beyond that, but my guides also told me it also has to do with balancing chakras that by balancing our chakras, we help the earth balance her chakras, that our chakras are directly connected with the chakras of the earth. Which makes sense because when you're meditating on the Kundalini rising, on, on channeling, then you know, you're drawing up energies from the earth, drawing down energies from the cosmos, and your chakras need to be in balance to do that. So to save this planet, we need to bring ourselves into balance and we need to bring our chakras into balance to bring our will and spirit into balance. And then the outcome card is the Two of Wands. So this immediately uh, made me think of the wildfires and the heat waves that are uh, currently happening because directly because of uh, extreme climate change. But also my guides say this has to do with choice. So we can choose one way or the other. We can choose to continue our culture of the devil, addiction to material things and leading to death. And this is the outcome of that. There's no water there in that card. There's no life there. Or we can choose to honor and love our mother and this is an alchemical outcome of bringing back life, balancing the earth. We can balance it. That's what they're saying. But it's either or right now. Either we go one way or the other. There's, there's no in between anymore. So we really have to rethink our lifestyle and what we're doing and what we're prepared to do to, to uh, save Gaia, <laughs> to bring her back into balance and bring ourselves back into balance. So as I was thinking about the uh, this reading, I, uh, I I was wondering how I would express it best to you. And the work of Dr. Masura Emoto came to my mind. And I don't know if uh, you are familiar with the work of Dr. Masura Emoto. I'm sure many of you are, but he's the person that. A scientist who researched the the how can you can you can you change the molecular structure of water by intent and by prayer, and uh, he did. So I wanted to read an article about him to remind us about his work or to inform people who have never heard of him before because it's mind blowing. But it, the potential of the of what he did. And how it relates to be, us being able to heal the planet is uh, very, very important. So this article came from Vox magazine. Oh, no, <laughs> sorry, not Vox. It came from uh, this website called The Wellness Enterprise. I'm sorry that the other article came from Vox. And I'll, I'll paste the, um, the website uh, link for you underneath. Dr. Masura Emoto, the Japanese scientist who revolutionized the idea that our thoughts and intentions impact the physical realm, is one of the most important water researchers in the world and that the world has known. For over 20 years, until he passed away in 2014, he studied the scientific evidence 
of how the molecular structure in water transforms when it's exposed to human words, thoughts, sounds, and intentions. The extraordinary life work of Dr. Emoto is documented in the New York Times bestseller, The Hidden Messages in Water. In his book, Dr. Emoto demonstrates how water exposed to loving, benevolent, and compassionate human intention results in aesthetically pleasing physical molecular formations in the water, while water exposed to fearful and discordant human intentions results in disconnected, disfigured and unpleasant physical molecular formations. He did this through magnetic resonance analysis technology and high-speed photographs. His research also showed us how polluted and toxic water, when expressed to prayer and intention, can be altered and restored to beautifully formed geometric crystals found in clean, healthy water. The following photos are images of photographs of the water um, in the Fujiwara Dam before and after the Reverend Kato Hakai, chief priest of the Yuchun, and I know pr not pronouncing that correctly, temple offered an hour long prayer over it. And, and those um, photographs, if you uh, cl click on the link uh, of the article that I'm reading from, you'll see the photographs. It's pretty amazing. His research um, uh, studied how also uh, Dr. Emoto's research also studied how sound affects water. The Emoto music studies demonstrated how certain types of sound, like classical music, generate beautifully uh, formed crystalline patterns, while heavy metal music generated ugly and distorted crystalline formations. Because it's discordant. I'm not not dissing <laughs> personally. I'm not dissing heavy metal, but um, it is discordant music. In the images below, you, uh, you see the crystalline formation resulting from water exposed to Mozart's Symphony Number no. 40, and then in contrast, what the water crystal image is like after listening to heavy metal music. Dr. Masura Emoto put water as a living consciousness on the map as a scientific uh, event as in the scientific world. He showed us how water is an energy capable of more than we ever imagined. The power human thoughts, sounds, and intentions have to strengthen and disempower is one of the greatest discoveries in our time. His work has us question. If water is affected by the words, intentions, and energies, what about human beings who are mostly made of water? If we transform the water and thoughts we are made of, what else is possible? That to me is amazing and it's so exciting because not just humans are made of water, water isn't everything. If water can be healed by, by human thought and prayer, then what else can be healed? And can we heal water that has been damaged by oil spills and by, um, you know, like the Flint water, uh, by chemicals? Uh, can we heal uh, all water? And can we heal not just water, but all, everything water is in? Can we heal the resonance of everything through prayer and prayer with water? So all you healers out there, all you energy healers, all you channelers, we can potentially think about it. We send our prayers to the earth, to the water. What will the effect be? And, and beyond that, I also believe that we can, through prayer, and also I... I, I, I I think through intercession with our angels and our spirit guides, because it's not just about us and our impact on the world, not, ju not just like humans, the world. I really believe we're coming to a time right now, we've come into a time that we're going to work with all of our um, relations. I think I might have mentioned that in the uh, sol summer solstice video. So it's not, it's about a, a collective, it's about a community and not just about a community of people, 
but this is the time when we are waking up to meeting our spirit guides, our our angels, our archangels, and the spirits in nature, <laughs> spirits in the clouds, spirits in the rain, uh, spirits in the trees, spirits in the earth. Native Americans know this, Aboriginals know this. Uh, they, they've they always known this. Uh, we knew it once, uh, or maybe we know it now, but as a collective, this is really what we are waking up to in this new age of Aquarius how many other spiritual beings are around us and we are being required to work with them so that we can heal this earth. This is how we're going to do it. This is what I think. We do it through prayer. We do it through action. We do it through uh, um, how we uh, live, the choices we make. And they matter. They really, really matter because I believe healing can hap happen on a quantum level. If an, uh, I, th I think Deepak Chopra talked about a critical mass, and it's a Buddhist concept, you know, a critical mass of people, if, if they can all meditate on uh, a healing event or, or a, something like the earth being surrounded by light or by the um, increase of vibration and uh, compassion and humanity, then it, it, it can happen. It will happen because... Uh, there's enough of a critical mass of consciousness that is uh, changing the molecular and energetic structure. I don't know about molecular, well, no, I guess molecular molecules are in everything, but I really meant the energetic um, uh, uh, resonance of, of, of this, <laughs> uh, of this uh, changing and shifting earth that we are a part of that is really all energy. As a quantum physicist would be happy to you know, talk about, right? It's it's all energy. Even things that seem inanimate uh, and solid are on, on some level fluid, um, on the molecular level, on the energetic level. Everything's energy. So how we how will we choose to work with this earth energetically and harmoniously and collectively, and also with a, a realization that all these spirits are are there to be acknowledged and. Uh, to be listened to and to be honored in this sense that they uh, they matter too, that, that, that everything has a action, everything has a, a purpose. How do we all work together so everything achieves its purpose? How's, how, how does the earth need to achieve its purpose? I think about things like, maybe, I don't know if this is, far, this is probably, probably far-fetched too, people but you know tornadoes i i think tornadoes have spirits i see them i see in in in, in their uh <laughs> in their formations they say they, they I, I can see a presence well you know karma created that tornado the tornado had to that that weather being had to uh become like that because of everything that was um uh uh, before it, you know, the way that the, the weather was shifting, the heat, uh, the, you know, the, the imbalances created that tornado. But the tornado, can we talk to the tornado? Can we energetically vibrate with the tornado so it maybe it doesn't have to uh, uh, devastate a, a territory? Or maybe it does. Maybe that's uh, just the way things have to be, and we have to respect that too. But can we change uh, uh, catastrophic climatic events by, by talking with the divas that are part of those events? So I don't know how many people I've lost talking about that, but it, it, it is in my mind. I do, I do believe it. Um, I really do. So I wanted to, uh, before I end, read a couple more cards, because I know this is a, a difficult topic, and I know uh, that with reason we, we can feel really in despair about it because it's gotten to this pass. But I wanted to bring hope, too, because I can't help it. My guides show me these possibilities that we can turn it around. And it's part of our spiritual evolution to be doing that. So we, we get to know through desperation, through necessity, um, uh, these parts of ourselves that we would probably never have woken up to. But hey, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it, it's uh, the, the ninth hour or whatever that term is. It's time, you know. We either we, we either we do it or we die, something like that. So because of that, because we've reached that point, human beings, what they are, now we we are actually finding out that about ourselves that we are our own magicians. 
but we are all connected at the same time in magic. So, and magic is that what I'm talking about, just that uh, awareness of the energetic and uh, resonance of all things and how that's alchemical, how that can uh, uh, change everything in a second sometimes. So the cards that I, uh, were chosen were from the Messenger Oracle book by Ravan or Ravain Philan. <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. It's R-A-V-Y-N-N-E. -E. Uh, last name is P-H-E-L-A-N. So the first card, see yourself in nature. You are born of man and woman, but humanity is born of the natural world. Now is the time to reconnect. Look out into the natural world, explore your world, and you will see who you are. Peel away all the judgment and dogma born of man and see your truest nature married, mirrored in the beautiful world around you. See your emotions in the uh, that are like the weather and uh, that's your senses t reach into the sky and the earth like branches and roots of trees. See yourself in nature and nature within yourself. And the next card. Protect the wild and green. You are a guardian of the earth and all who share the trees, the animals, the birds, insects, and inhabitants of the ocean blue. It is time to play an active role in protecting and preserving the wild and the green by being aware of it and limiting your impact upon the natural world. This world is not yours to possess. It is a gift given to you and your children. Tread gently, tread with care and walk with love. Remember, your relationship with the world is a symbiotic one. So, I do personal readings. I read past lives. Uh, I um, read present. Uh, I help uh, people contact their loved ones. And I also love to introduce people to their guardian angels. <laughs> and uh, that is part of this. So the more we know our angels, the more that we can intercede because this is a requirement, I think, as I was talking about before, that we don't do this on our own. We do this with our spirit guides. We do this with our guardians. And it's through the power of communication and also prayer that all these miracles can take place. So prayer is is a really um, uh, uh, oh multifaceted topic. I, I would I'm going to do a, another video on prayer and what prayer means because I've been uh, uh, trying to figure it out. Prayer, but my my spirit guides want me to um, become very familiar with prayer. And to help people understand what it is, so I'm I'm still in that learning process. What is prayer? What does prayer really mean? But that's a video for another time. <laughs> so it is a hot uh, Sunday here, and, and that is how it was yesterday in Michigan. Um, it's probably in the upper 80s, maybe mid to upper 80s. It was in the 90s yesterday, and it's sunny and beautiful. And I will go out into it very very soon. So have a beautiful day, night, evening, wherever you are. And I will uh, probably next video do a polit another political reading. Uh, but uh, take care. Until next time. <laughs>